Hello Internet, I'm Jackie Fox, and this is How to Talk Like a Leftist, Episode 1. If 2020 hasn't taught you how to spell bourgeois, bourgeoisie, on the first try, just due to sheer repetition, you should really try it out. You'll probably discover that it's a very useful word when describing basically everything wrong with America. Bourgeoisie, the capitalist class who owns most of society's wealth and means of production. Other than just using repetition to burn it into my brain, I also chunk the word to make it easier to remember. Bourgeois is just, and bourgeoisie is, but what's the difference? As noted above, bourgeoisie refers to the entire upper class and the majority of the wealth and the means of production. Bourgeois, however, is basically singular, at least it is as a noun. As an adjective, it has a wide variety of uses. Bourgeois, adjective, upholding the interest of capitalism. Noun, a person who upholds the interest of capitalism, typically wealthy enough to own land and means of production. A bourgeois person has enough money to hire workers and not work themselves. Less Marxist definitions are more vague and often relate the definition to the working class. However, I would draw the line at having enough wealth to not have to be a part of the working class to achieve a good standard of living. I feel like this is an intentionally constructed problem. If you can subvert the popular meaning of the very language we use to talk about class conflict to a point where we have even less words to describe our ruling class. There's also petite bourgeoisie. Petite is just French for small and then this context it's pronounced more like petty. So petit bourgeoisie who have done well enough to own the means of production but not so well that they could afford to not work. This would be the mom and pop from the local store who seem to work 80 hours a week every week. When the petit bourgeoisie is more likely to think of themselves as part of the bourgeoisie and identify with their interests, they have almost none of the economic or political power. Furthermore, the political motives of the bourgeoisie tend to put the petit, the petit bourgeoisie at a competitive disadvantage with their larger businesses. So their faith in the bourgeoisie parties to represent their interests is misplaced. The conflict between the bourgeoisie and the, and the proletariat, petit bourgeoisie, is at its core a struggle between the workers and those who are wealthy enough to never have to work again. And in that struggle, the government is the only power structure that can be beholden enough to the people to mitigate the enormous advantage and influence the bourgeoisie have by virtue of their wealth. In most modern democracies, however, we have very little democratic power. Instead, that power is given to the bourgeoisie because of their wealth. Most political parties are, for this reason, only concerned with the bourgeois class interest. A socialist party, by contrast, is a party that seeks to have the workers' voices heard more loudly within our halls of power. That is and must be the defining quality of a working class party. Despite party rhetoric, we can see by their actions that both American parties are predominantly aligned with the bourgeoisie if they are not the bourgeois themselves. The night before I wrote this, September 29th, at that miserable excuse for a presidential debate. Only the bourgeois, on, only the bourgeoisie were represented on the stage. On one side was a man so rich he hardly pays income taxes at all. On the other side was a man so rich he paid Bernie Sanders' net worth in taxes last year. Men like this are so far removed from poverty they cannot fathom our lives. No wonder they love America. At the drop of the hat, they can buy 10 workers to help them do basically anything they want. No matter how many times they might look into the camera and deliver a line that they hired 20 people to help them focus test, they cannot actually fathom struggle.
Just one more thing before I roll credits on this. I recently became aware of the No Comrades Under 1K sub, and I would just like to throw up on the screen some comrades that I'm subscribed to that have not yet reached 1,000 subs, but I really feel like they deserve it. So check these channels out, like their videos, give them a subscription, do what you can to help them out, share them on Facebook, whatever social media platforms you happen to be on, and let's try to build a stronger community together. I'm Jackie Fox, and my content will always be ad-free because I'm eschewing corporate donations to the channel. I just ask that if you can donate a little bit of money on Patreon like these fine, foxy folks, or if you want to make a one-time donation, you can donate on Coffee. If you're looking for another way to support the channel, I'm also making fox hats with my logo on them. They are currently in the design phase, and I'm willing to allow people to ask for customized hats. Prices may vary depending on the cost of labor to manufacture them, because I want to make sure that my workers are paid fairly. 